Hello, and welcome to the Painters Motivating Painters end of month review video for March. If, uh, if you, this is the first time you've tuned into the channel, uh, leave a comment to tell us how you got here, because that's random. Uh, and if you've never heard of the PMV before, well, look at one of our other videos. I explain it every month, and it's getting kind of old. Uh, so in March, there was Adepticon, which I managed to be at, because I was in the US. Uh, which you, you probably know about if you're watching this channel. but. Um, we want to say a big shout out to everyone who competed in the Golden Demon, whether you got a vinylist pin or a commended entry or a reward or you were just there for the crack. I think, you know, it was a big deal. Uh, and then we have a special shout out to uh, Kwon Ho Kim, who uh, got a gold for his kill team squad entry for 40k uh, and a bronze for Hellbrecht, which we had gotten a nice preview of back in December. And Jim successfully called and said, you'll do well in a contest with that. I was looking at the entries, I was like, I know that guy, good job. So, fair play, Kwon Ho Kim. And also, big shout out to Ben Cantor, who I accidentally insulted and then took two classes from, and they were really good. After I finished who he was. Anyway, uh, got a lot of great entries this month, um, and we're just going to get straight into it. So, first up, we've got Adam Talbot, finished his Slovenius model, and just looking for generic feedback. Cool. This is uh, really nice. It's from, I guess it was from Monster Hunter. I think it's from Monster Hunter. I looked at some concept art for it. Very cool. Uh, I really like the blue armor and the kind of the, the like run of colors you got on the blue. Uh, the kind of heat effect in the mouth is really, really nice. Um, uh, and I like the kind of limited palette, which I think it is based on like the palette from the game, but it's still nice the way you've like, you basically got red and blue and you can go over the top with adding a bunch of other stuff in there and uh, in terms of kind of like areas for improvement uh, i think you could do more to differentiate the different kind of components here because you the blue is nice but if you look at like say like the it's all kind of highlighted and shaded the one way so his like upper jaw and his lower jaw are done the exact same um and you could do like you know something to differentiate them like a little bit more purple or you could go left highlight on one of them or whatever just to show the kind of overall lighting situation but then it's especially noticeable up on like the big horns on the back uh, where you've got like these plates and then the horn and all looks like it's kind of one material i was looking at the, the concept art as i said or shots from the game or whatever and they did it more like kind of like the horn was really darker or it looked almost like it was glass or like crystally kind of material just because when you have such a big area, you know, you've got several kind of plates of this chitin or whatever, and then the horn, and it kind of just all builds up from your darkest blue to your lightest blue, that um, it just starts to look kind of samey. So yeah, I think it'd be cool to like go back to dark and then back up again somewhere in the middle there. Uh, and you can do that thing where you, you know, you desaturate the colors. So you end up going into kind of like blue, black, and then going up just adding white directly to that to get a kind of gray color. And that's what gives you that kind of crystally look if that's what you're going for. Um, only other little thing I noticed was that on the toes, it is a different looking material, they're like toenails, uh, but they're a little bit scratchier and not quite as, as polished looking as the rest. So just a few little glazes of a, like a brown over that to tie it all together and hide those texture marks, or just make them, like it's good to have texture there, but just to knock it back a little bit. Um, but uh, I think it, it's like a generally a very good looking piece. And I love the way you've captured like in the eye, you've got like the red around and then the eye stands out again. And it's such a small little detail that it really, really pops and draws, draws a lot of focus and character down there. So that was a great, great success uh, in that area. Do you want to add something on there, Jim? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, agree with all that. Um, yeah, classic scheme for the Glavinus. And I think you've um, you've stayed true to that really well. Um but yeah, a little bit more travel in the blue would be nice. Like you can see there's much better contrast in the red than the blue. So uh, yeah, I agree with that. Um, the only other thing I spotted really was with the heated uh, tail uh, spike strike thingy. I think it might look a little bit better perhaps if it was um, it was hotter towards the base of these spikes that are on the top. And then as it's getting further away from the source of the heat, which is obviously the body, then it would go down through the oranges and the reds and get sort of darker towards the tip. That's the only other thing, really. I think the, the rest of the colour palette and that was um, was really nice for it. And you pulled it off well inside the mouth as well. It's quite a hard effect to get 
Uh, so nice one there. And then the only other thing really was just maybe a little bit more color in the rocks. They're very, very gray rocks. Um, and they, the, the tufts look like they're just kind of stuck on straight out of the packet as well. So maybe experiment with um, doing some br dry brushes and washes uh, on your tufts just to add a little bit of um, variation. It also makes them look painted. We can sort of recognize when things are not painted versus painted and it makes quite a big difference uh, to the reader. So um, yeah, but otherwise cool looking beastie. Oh, the, uh, one more thing, the teeth look very white as well. Try and use a bone color and just highlight it with white. Don't just do them straight, flat white like this. It never sells as well. Um, more in line with what you did with the toe talons, I think. Uh, but yeah, otherwise really, really cool. Thank you, Adam. Um, moving up to Joe Cop, and I think we had a choice of doing either either. So I'm gonna go for Papa McWoobly Clop or whatever his name is, I can't remember. <laughs> um, so cool Orc Bust, um, seen quite a lot of these done and um, I like what you've done with it um, palette wise. It's quite uh, natural, ruddy tones. So I'm liking that. You've got the highlighting done quite nicely on the skin. Uh, so you've got a nice level of contrast like down the center and then it's sort of falling off to shadow at the sides and up on the neck as well. Um, but it does look kind of, the whole thing does look kind of like washed out and desaturated. It might be uh, like the exposure in the photo that you're using because even the, the black of the stand looks kind of milky as well a little bit. So uh, forgive me if that's not the case. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell if, you know, if it is the picture, you know, um, next time just try lowering the exposure a bit for the photo. That would really help us. Um, so other things with this, um, just separating the elements out a little bit, like where these rings are on through his lip, there needs to be like really dark line between the two. So you can use like a watered down, um, very dark contrast paint for it or oil washes or something like that. Um, just to get really thin, really dark lines. Uh, where elements are separated from each other that would be really good um same goes for like the hair ringlet things and these metal um coins or trinkets that are really sort of his skull cap um i think you did a good job on the feathers like the way those are colored and highlighted those are nice um but also next time you're doing feathers also experiment like patterns in the feathers that can make them a bit more interesting um, these ones look fine, but just I always like to point it out because you don't see it very often. I think it's really cool. Um, I like the texture that you've done in like the leathery, um, the leather elements of it. That's really good. I think you've got a nice level of highlight there and texture, so that's nice. Um, can't say the same about the head, like the dreadlocks. Um, some really nice versions of this bust I've seen. They, you, they've actually got a really nice like cylindrical highlight going down them. Uh, sort of down the middle you can see it sort of from the sheen that's in the in the photo itself you know it's highlighted like right down the middle so if you can force this lighting situation with paint as well it'd be really really helpful i think um but did you say this was first bust uh no no not this one um but yeah really really nice overall just try and um separate things a bit more cleanly um get a bit more saturation in if that's you know if it looks like this in your hands and not the photo um and yeah really really nice work with the textures and otherwise so thank you for admitting joe over to you matt yeah i totally agree the textures look really cool with bust that's always a good idea to add you know extra detail in there because you have room then for me the skin is is probably the best bit i really just like that kind of tone that you use it's really nice and the kind of expression in the eye um i was just thinking the yellow feather looks a little bit less kind of realistic than the other ones and so I just look at like if you're doing some like a feather, you can always, and especially in a slightly bigger scale, you can look up reference for it. And uh, so one of the things is that like the the barb up the middle isn't actually colored the same way as the other bits, and they usually have like an individual feather will usually have like different kind of colors in it. I think it's just I think you get away with it with the blue and the purple, but the yellow it's just so like bright and yellowy looking that it looks a little bit like false. Uh, whereas you know obviously you want everything to read you know, not painted yellow, but you know, actually being that color. Um, but yeah, I think it's really nice and it's a cool take on the bust. Uh, just in terms of if you're submitting again, I also like your, your knife bringer dude, uh, but like you can submit multiple models or, but they have to be kind of like painted the same way just because we'd have too much stuff to talk about. Cause like obviously like the tan looks completely different from your bust. 
so you'd basically be doubling up on errors there. Uh, but thanks for submitting, uh, and hopefully that was of, of help to you in the future. Uh, J Lake Jamieson submitted this whip of a face ring of some sort. Uh, so Jamie, I said it, if you're listening now, I'm just going to repeat it, I said it in the comments. We already do whips in the work, some work in progress in the end of month review, just because it's like impossible, you'll see like later on, it's impossible for us to really say like, you know, is this 20% done? Is it 80% done? Is it 100% done? And then we could just give you a lot of feedback on it's stuff that you were going to do anyway. So basically something needs to be, you know, like it needs to be completed. And then what we're really giving you feedback on is what you could do with your next model or what you could do to like as just finishing touches to like just take it up another knob. Uh, whereas if it's this early in the work in progress stage, it's just not super helpful. Uh, but keep at it. It's looking really good so far. Uh, I just, uh, so I'd love to see how it looks uh, when it's a bit further on. Uh, and then moving on to the Keeper of Secrets. Jim, do you want to field this one or will I launch into it? Well, you, you crack on, mate. It's all good. Well, yeah. Uh, so Keeper of Secrets uh, from Spanish. First time on the review. Very good. Uh, it's a really nice looking figure. Uh, I think the lighting setup for your photos isn't 100% ideal. Looks like you're using a very like warm bulb, which kind of like throws the colors for us. But it's still like still readable. It's not like a potato picture, but um, you kind of want to have. You also want to have even lighting just in future. Like see the way that she's lit up much more on one side than the other. So then it creates shadows where there aren't shadows painted on. Uh, but this is a really nice like classic scheme. Uh, it looks kind of like very tidily put together in terms of the blacks going where they need to go and the red going where it needs to go as well. Um, I think with the black, you've got like a little bit of like a blue tinge in the kind of cloak and stuff, which is nice. But like, probably it'd look a bit more interesting if you look at the bits where they're just solid black. Like if you just did them, it's very, very, very dark blue or green or whatever color it is you're using. Just because plain black looks really boring. And most things aren't really black when you look at them closely. It's just some color that's been darkened down until it's nearly black. Um, uh, and it just makes it look a, a lot more kind of like natural, whereas something that's painted black tends to look painted very quickly. So I would just do do everything with like, you know, a thin coat of some very dark blue that you're going for, and then do the highlights up in blue as well, like you've done here. Uh, and that'll just like add an extra little level or layer to your your, your black rather than just having it be flat black. Uh, as well, you might want to go with, you've got a, you know, kind of got silver on gold, uh, which is, you know, a good look for this kind of jewelry and stuff. But I'd suggest when you're doing that, find some way to kind of separate them because especially when you're using metallic paints, when the light shines on them, they both like reflect um, and then you kind of lose where one is. I don't think it's super like bad here. Uh, like you can still make it like, oh, it's a silver chain with like a gold bead on it. But if you use like a wash and you like darken the silver, up and like on the edges towards the gold, and then you leave the gold bright. That'll just sort of separate everything out a little bit better, um, and that'll you know just make it read a little bit better. Um, and as well, similarly on the red, it's like a little bit like one color. You've gotten away with it because it's such a large figure, so it's got these obvious creases in it. But putting something like a wash over that, and then reapplying paint onto the, the areas like the flat panels, the areas. You would expect like to be uh, we we'll just take it up like another little step there and also the, there's like that like middle headdress thingy which it looks a little looks not done uh, i mean it's black maybe it, the intention of this would be, be black but if so like that's definitely a good example of like it looks kind of like that blue was just primer um so if you are if you do want it to be black like do something like blue like edging on it just to, to show us that it's kind of like a the kind of material that it is. Uh, but yeah, I'd say she's ready to kick some ass on the table if that's what you're going to do. Otherwise, it's a nice looking ornament because they're such big, cool looking figures. It's the new Wish latest Keeper of Secrets. It's not really new anymore, but good job. Uh, hope to see it more from you in the future. Jim? Yeah, they are huge, aren't they? I, I want to have a go at one of these. I've been meaning to for, for ages. Um, awesome looking models. It's one of my favorite from GW. Um, and uh, Angela, you haven't kind of said like what um, what sort of level, what sort of quality you're going for. So I'm just going to kind of assume it's for tabletop. Um, 
so for for tabletop, I think it's in a really um, it's in a really good place. Uh, as Matt said, yeah, you could take a few elements a little bit further. Um, like with black, you could push more highlight on this. Um, only fifty percent of the surface needs to still be black for it to read as black. So you can go and you can broaden out the highlights. They don't necessarily need to be brighter. You could just make them a little bit broader, and that'll just kind of make it a little bit more light anyway, without making without actually making the tones brighter. Um, same for the like the red and the headdress, a little bit of um, like variety in the shades there if you wanted to. But I think the biggest opportunity really with this, because like it's probably the biggest part of the thing when you're looking at it in, from the front, is the skin. I would take the skin a little bit further. So I'd experiment with um, highlighting um, skins, like how it. Um, how the light behaves on different muscle structures um, where you get um, nice like sheeny highlights and then when you get soft shadows and then when you get really deep shadows because this skin kind of feels a little bit like it's it's been based and then washed quite heavily and there's like a bit of staining going on like you can especially see it on the midriff that might be shadow though from the photo so forgive me if that's not the case um, so yeah, I think if you were gonna, you wanted to improve one thing on it without like addressing the whole thing, I'd, I'd take another look at the skin and just try and punch the contrast up on that a bit. And I think that would really, really help. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's, it's pretty clean. And if it's for the table, then, um, yeah, really nice, really nice work, Angela. Thank you very much for submitting. Um, okay. Now Simon, who's going to blow, blow my mind now with how much thought and effort he's gone to, um, and I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm not very good with like artists and these intricate methods that they put onto things. So um, I'll I'll skip through this quite briefly because you know you know what you're on about, Simon. So Frank Frazetta and how he uses light manipulation to create lines of interest um, to get the viewer to look at a certain point. So um, you do that by kind of keeping some areas really really undetailed and rough and kind of blurry so um when i look at oh come on open it up there we go um when we look at this thing that you've done here with like the 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 lines that you want the viewer to travel on and then the light the like the blurry areas that you don't want the viewer to look at um i don't know if this frank person like paints miniatures or whether they're they're flat but um the lines that you've kind of painted on there don't massively like relate to the end result if that makes sense you he's absolutely right in that you can make the follow the eyes follow you know certain lines um and it's to do with you know brightness and contrast and saturation but obviously like bright colors as well and when you look at this guy it's like the eye is going straight to the dragons for me because they are so bright and so saturated when, yeah, you said you wanted to keep this area of him like a little bit more like blurry and less detailed and it's very, very desaturated as well. So when I'm looking at it, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of following those lines that you've drawn on on this image here. But I think it's just purely down to the fact that my eyes are drawn to the bright, saturated green and it's much smoother painting as well. So I don't really know what the goal was with these lines, because usually with with, like I say, I don't know what Frank paints, whether they're miniatures or or um, or, or 2D stuff. But wouldn't the wouldn't our attention want to be drawn towards like the face of the bust? That's normally what happens um, with them. So it's kind of not drawn to the face because I'm looking at the dragons. Now, that doesn't mean that the face isn't well painted because I think it is quite well painted. I mean, it's a very sort of scratchy and desaturated everywhere else. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, don't forget that it, the eye is also drawn to bright, saturated colours. And that's kind of what's happening here. So if you wanted the attention to be on the dragons and follow those lines, then then mission success, you, you've done it. But um, yeah, in, in general for it... Um, I did think you could still do with some more separation of the elements and some more um, smoothing out of this kind of sketchiness because, you know, as miniature painters, we, we appreciate looking at them like as a whole, like broadly to see what else has been going on. And we like, you know, if you've got one in your hand, it's nice to sort of explore it and look around it and find some little hidden gems that didn't first jump out at you and stuff. Um, and I think, you know, you'd, you'd run out of things to be impressed by 
when everything else has been sort of left so so blurry and um and scratchy so i think um yeah i'm not 100 percent sold but by all means prove me wrong keep practicing this um but i i think if you were to i think it would look better if you were to use the skill uh that you've used on sort of the dragons and the face with like the smoothness and the better contrast but then add in that extra layer of contrast by getting the separation in on all the elements i think it would look better to be brutally honest with you and i mean that in the most constructive way possible i really do because like i say i'm not an expert with these sorts of things but it's just the way it reads to me as somebody who doesn't like know who frank is and what these techniques are you know but it you know how many other people are gonna are gonna have that sort of knowledge that you've got so but by like by all means as i said do, do prove me wrong and keep going with it if it's if it's something i'm going to research it a little bit more actually see who this frank guy is and have a look at it because it is an interesting concept um so yeah i wish you luck with it and i wish i could have been a little bit more helpful but um yeah um over to you matt yeah yeah i'm gonna say yeah definitely really cool concept like amazing made of thought put into like how you're going to execute on this um and i think possibly that there was too much thought uh, put into it because if you look at the amount of lines you drew on him like that's a lot of lines uh, and you know when you're talking about composition you're like breaking it down into basic basic shapes that are the overall piece if you look at from far away so the more stuff you add on there uh the less kind of basic structure you can see in it um also it's worth noting like Ben Cantor talked about this. They're just going out of the Come back to the reference area. Uh, if you're painting a canvas, um, you can make things disappear. Well, actually, you can't even make, you're creating everything from scratch. Yeah. But that's because you're painting a piece of like sheet and there's nothing there. So you're putting in light where you want light and you're putting in shadow like anywhere else. And you can have elements that just disappear into the background. But you can't. Get, do that with a miniature like the stuff is there unless you start actually just cutting bits off it um so i thought like some of your work in progress stuff it was much more clear kind of lighting and then you started painting like say his belly his chest his sash and you've got that pretty well lit up but you've got the side of his face in shadow uh, and it doesn't like read super well and overall like if i just look at his face i get this really cool idea of like this is like merchant and he's in like a bazaar or he's in a warehouse and there's like maybe like one of those half doors and there's light coming in through that and the rest of it is, is in shadow and there's like this big desert sky outside but then i look at the dragon i'm like why is the back of the dragon on his arms being lit up like his face is casting a shadow on one side of his face but the dragons don't cast any shadow on anything like it probably like if you have to think about like the physical scenario where this would be in um, you can cheat it a little bit more in 2D art because you can literally just put light where it is. But even then, you, they're still obeying the rules of, you know, like of light and shadow. So if, if you're saying that there's some light that is hitting his nose and his nose is casting a shadow on his face, those dragon's wings should be casting a shadow on the back of their. He should be casting a shadow on that dragon because it looks like the light's coming from his left, but then the dragon is just lit from the front, which doesn't immediately make sense to us. And it basically makes it, it kind of hides the whole cool light and shadow uh, dichotomy you've got going on in this face because you've got other bits that are just like, oh, that's just lit, sort of generally. Uh, and I think that's one of the problems that uh, Jim was mentioned there, where like your green on you know, your dragon super saturated and bright, whereas if you like darken that down and only had like a rim of the dragon's face lit up with a really direct light that would also be desaturated, we'd have more kind of interest in the middle. Also, be careful when you're doing lines. Like, if you draw a light line, then one arm, and to the end, it will just draw attention, like, then from here and across there and away. Whereas if you had it, like, his arm gets, like, dark again towards the end, then it kind of, like, makes you look around. Because probably what you're looking to do is create some sort of, like, triangular composition here. You had, like, a triangle on your plan, but then you had, like, some sloopy lines, which I think are just to go with the dragon's tail. But again, if you're saying, like, why would the dragon's tail get lit up? If he's like, what scenario would that happen in? If you were painting this as a canvas, you probably just wouldn't do the dragon's tail. You'd have, and you're saying, like, you've lit heavily from here. You're like, yep, his whole torso just vanishes. You can't do that in miniature painting, but you can get, you know, pretty close. Uh, and yeah, really cool. Like, to be honest with you, like, 
I really like this. I think it looks really cool, um, uh, and I'd, I'd be very happy with it if I were you. Uh, and totally keep up the that I'm like super like thought out process and goals for everything, and it's going to definitely stand to you later on. And uh, and he's still a, a cool looking piece on the on the shelf, I'm sure. Uh, thank you many for submitting, Simon. Hopefully that's uh, been of some help to you. Hopefully to see more from you in the future. Um, okay, then we've got someone else doing a bust, Tony Hodge. It means close to two months of paint, and in your one and a half years of painting, it's a single best, single piece, best work today. Yeah, really good. One and a half years is not a lot of time to be painting, and two months is actually a pretty good, pretty good time on a bust like this, where it's basically just half, of, most more than half of a tiny woman, uh, which I've said multiple times. That you're like, uh, busts are hard. The more butt of the bust there is, the harder it is, and the more it's a woman, the harder it is, because you got to get that real soft complexion but have really high contrast and yeah i think you did really really well especially on the face like it's really nice uh you've got that like dark outline everything really reads from like a mile away and you've got those smooth really beautiful transitions like up the high highlight you get that pale skin in there and the eyes called out and she's not like cross eyes or anything it looks great uh i really like the war paint as well especially on the face uh, I think on the arm, it's a little bit less good. I was kind of wondering this pattern that you have there, it's like a Celtic whatever knot thing. Uh, maybe there should, like, there's like a dark spot you've done in the middle, but I think probably it's so big, maybe it should be skin, uh, if that makes sense. I'm not sure it would make a huge difference, but it just doesn't look quite as good as, it doesn't have that really crisp line look to it as you have on the face, which is fair because it's a bit more complicated. Uh, also, I'm guessing it's meant to be like whoa like painted on and um, if it's a tattoo you want to do that you do that trick where you like put it under the skin or whatever where you play skin color over it but that wouldn't apply to this but what you could do like this is a trick with you know freehand if something's just trying to get a really symmetrical pattern would be really hard like think of how much hours an actual tattoo artist would put into doing that and they'd use a stencil and um but you can do like break it up and if you had like a smear going through it like a splotch of blood on it or like a bit of it like rubbed off or something then because it's not a perfectly symmetrical pattern it like lets you away with a lot more but i still think it looks good uh the non-metallic metal i think it looks uh quite good for one and a half years painting I hadn't even touched it which is one and a half years painting i was like probably 20 years before i, I touched nmm uh it's most successful on the belt um you do have a weird like there's a kind of a stray highlight where it's like being lit like in one direction and they have another highlight to the other side i just look up like reference for like like a symbol is a good one uh for kind of domes and you can kind of see that you know uh on that like bottom kind of like underneath ring thing I suppose you do have it as like a rim light but i'm not sure why there's like one light that's to the left on the bottom bit but it's at the it's on the bottom left of the bottom piece of her belt whereas all the other it's at the top left on everything else so it should be lit on the top bottom right because the light goes through it if that makes sense i think the whole domey bit is really convincing the uh the grip on her bow is kind of semi-convincing and where you're struggling the most is all the like filigree stuff on her bracers so with that probably one of the things to think about is uh you have to think the overall shape of the whole thing so the bracer is a cylinder so you have to kind of highlight all that runic inscription stuff with the pattern that would be on a cylinder if that makes sense and then do like edge highlighting just to just call out the edges and things which is tricky uh, i think it works better on her left arm you got a bit of that going on already and then just have like maximum highlight up there the colors you have are working pretty well it looks like you did a little bit of a kind of a older gold uh, or um, rather than the brass so maybe next time just try and do that like brass color you in her belt like if it's not broke don't fix it you know it's working really well um but it's still very convincing down there um and for your first try at nmm what would you say struggled with it okay well everyone struggles with it uh the leather looks pretty good it's could have a little bit more like wear on the edges with like extreme highlights if you look at a belt you know it's going to have little cracks and stuff all around the edges but it's still got that kind of general texture and leathery feel to it so that's, that's pretty good uh, a nice job on like putting that bow string on there. That's like our new thing. <laughs> like, yeah, bows need to have strings on them, which makes them look Absolutely. really good. So thanks for that. Uh, so hopefully I've given you 
We still have to work on there. It's a really lovely looking piece. I'm happy over to my co-host. Uh, I think this is Lagatha. Lagatha. And I absolutely love Lagatha. If you've ever watched Vikings, oh, what a woman. Majestic. It looks a lot like her. Um, so, yeah, I think you've done a wonderful job. Um, really, really nice. Uh, I love what you've done uh, with, with the face. Like, the soft contrast in there is really, really good. Um, you could maybe rosy up her cheeks a little bit. Um, and maybe a little bit more in the nose. It's kind of like a bit grey up here. So maybe just a little bit more colour um, around the nose as well next next time you do a bust. And then just like all of the rest of the skin, really. I think this, this is the biggest um, challenge, obviously, but it's um, like the biggest area, um, not, for, not for improvement, but for kind of like um, just like a, a little finishing touch, if you like. Just like slight colour glazes like down towards the shadows, reds purples like in the really really deep stuff um but it's really tricky on on female skin because I mean, you've got the gist of it it's very 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 soft um but it's just lacking a little bit of the like the full run of color and you have to exaggerate it on models especially with warrior women because um you know they're outside they see a lot of um action a lot of weather so uh yeah there's a lot of blood running around like in joints um where the skin is thinner uh not the skin is thinner sorry where like the tissue is thinner like the skin is closer to, to bones and stuff like on the hips um is a good example knuckles um both both rows of them so yeah areas like that for just a little bit more color for the skin and that will bring so much more life to it but it is really really good anyway i don't want to like you know say that you haven't done a great job and just chip away at it because you have done a really nice job you've done really good tones for the blonde hair as well not too yellow um don't go any more yellow i think it's more um it's kind of more true tone from the front than it is from the back it's like a little bit more ochre on the back um so you could push some more shadows around in some of these folds like of the braiding just to give it a little bit more structure to the hair um Good shot at the fur. Fur is a nightmare to paint, so I can see you spent a long time doing that. Um, so well done. Um, also consider at some point next time with fur doing patterns in the fur. It just breaks it up and makes it so much, so much easier to paint because it doesn't have to look all the same. Do some sort of, do some sort of pattern. Nature is your friend. Google fur pattern. Done. Pick one. It doesn't really matter. It could have been any animal. She's skinned and draped over her back. Um, I really like what you did with the gold as well. That's great. So follow what Matt said. Just pushing the contrast really on the braces. I think the you know, the highlights aren't too too bad. I think if you just push the contrast and made them as bright as this one, it would really sell. This bit, this chainmail on the side, is an absolute triumph. I love that. That's really, 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 really great. Um, and then with the leather, like the straps that are going over her like chest armor is is the best. So. Um, do some more of that over on the braces and you'll be good to go, I think. Uh, and on the um, on the uh, quiver, quiver, quiver it is. Yes, just take it a little bit further. You're on the right track, just just keep pushing it. Um, and then for the bowstring, yes, it's a bit of copper wire, but we can see it's copper wire because it's copper and it's wirish. Um, so maybe next time look at, um, what did I see somebody do? I think they used like a strand of dental floss was a good one and you can stretch it across um a cut like a glass right and put a rubber band around it so it holds it securely and then glue super glue down it so it will stop it from flapping and then you've got this like pretty much rock solid tiny little strand um beautiful thing for doing bowstrings um so try that next time because this does look better than having nothing absolutely but you can see that it is a bit of copper wire so um yeah try that next time or look for some other ways of doing it um or at the very least paint it i would say uh but yeah other than that really really strong stuff so thank you tony love this piece thank you very much um moving up to alexis um who once again is rendering me pretty speechless um because it's a triumph and i think i'm gonna hand you over to matt pretty quickly because <laughs> this is wonderful again i absolutely love it um brilliant use of light and shadow on the wings like deliberately painting this one um much darker than this one keeping the like the 
the brightest parts like right in the middle like to keep the attention towards the rider saturated green and yellow to keep your attention up here which is all really wonderful um muscle structure on the griffin is fantastic i love the way you've picked those out great separation through the feathers the rock just looks like you yeah you picked it up and put it on a base but obviously I, I mean that in the most complimentary way it looks really really real is what i'm trying to say like with the extra detritus and moss and like the tuftage that's going on like paint job i've, I've pretty hard pressed to find anything the only thing that i thought was why is there a magenta tone reflecting in this steel that's up here i didn't get that but there's no pictures of the back of the bird so i don't know if there might be something on there that's casting magenta light that was pretty much it to be honest the only other thing was like the block is a bit rough <laughs> that's it that, that, that's it really i'd absolutely love it it's a masterpiece once again so um yeah congratulations thank you very much um matt what do you reckon yeah you're out of the barrel when you're like complaining about the uh <laughs> quality of block of wood the model is mounted on but fair all 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 thoughts are fair yeah this is super nice really really nicely painted the wings are like an absolute masterpiece simon isley if you're still watching i think this is a good example of like you know one of the wings is painted it's having less detail less brightness to it but it still kind of picked out in a convincing way which is super hard to do so alexis good job and i love the way you can see like the patterns have disappeared like there's that kind of pattern towards the end of the right wing but then on the left wing you can't see that because it's like well it's too dark you can't you wouldn't be able to make it out and it's super nice and the way you got that like blue sheen on the black feathers it's super good mm. and all those lovely warm tones at the bottom um so my only real kind of like complaint plenty of a complaint but like for me it's kind of the difficult piece because you got this this beast that has a lot of go stuff going on, and then you got the rider, and you kind of want to have where his attention mostly you know focused on, and like you did a really good job with the mane of the beast, like getting lighter and lighter and lighter up the face, and then you've got like that black line around the eye and then a big eye in the middle, uh, and then I think the beak is just like maybe it depends on obviously what angle you're looking at it, but I think the beak might be a bit too much saturated yellow in such a big area because it's drawing attention a lot away from the rider. Um, and then as well with the rider, like the rider herself has a lot going on because she's got this kind of like purple skin tone and really lovely, like bright saturated hair that's green. It makes me think of like, like Franime, like, like French anime, like in the Daft Punk videos, that kind of thing. It's really cool, really nice style, but you've got like these, she's got a huge amount of contrast, but then actually she's kind of like how she contrasts with the beast is a bit weird where it's all like warm earthy colors. And then it's got that blue gem for contrast, where she's purple and green, which are like also complementary colors, but aren't aren't complementary with the thing itself. Um, and it kind of makes me look either at the beak or at her torso. And I think one of the reasons is because her hair is green and her armor is green, it makes the green kind of like not stand out as much, if that makes sense. Because if it was just her hair, you'd be like, oh, I'm looking at that. And her, her armor was like brown or whatever. But because it's, done with both of them being that like kind of very saturated vibrant green you are attracted to it but what happens to me anyway I look at her hair and then i look down to the next bit of the green and i kind of skip over her face uh if that makes sense but like again like she looks absolutely stupendous on her own and the beast looks like unbelievably good on its own and it's going to be very hard to tie those together uh with the amount of of you know detail and color and, and everything you got going on uh, I thought the glaive thingy, her weapon, I was like, is it maybe burnt or whatever? And I was like, I don't even care. It looks cool. <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense for it to be those colors, but it looks cool anyway. Um, but yeah, just have a little bit of a think about your kind of overall palette because like, you've done a good job of like desaturating out the purple skin because she's so pale and well lit, but it's still purple. So you end up with like, you know, got yellow, blue, purple, green. And you're like, that's like a tetrad of colors. That's a little bit awkward. Uh, to have like really high saturation in all of them. Uh, but that is similarly nitpicky to uh, the, <laughs> the wooden block it's on. Like it's a super well painted piece, absolutely gorgeous. Really like, I don't know if there's anyone who's painting wings better than Alexis Bonaire <laughs> at the moment, because those things are top 
top notch. Dude. Uh, thanks a million for submitting, as always. And I'm sure we'll see more of your amazing work in the future. Now, speak more wings. Nathan Klein. Good name. Uh, any general advice? It's first attempt to paint a background beyond just big colors. It's cool. Uh, I love this crow. I think you posted the crow to the group, like, just on its own. Uh, and it's awesome. Like, it looks so much like a crow. Um, you know, it's got that like black, but it's got like the sheen to it, and, and like different kind of colors mixed in with the feathers, and then you can see the individual kind of like strands of feather being picked out, barbules or whatever they're called, uh, and that beady little eye uh, down at the end there with the mouth as well. Uh, so a couple of thoughts about this, like I love the bird, I don't know if I do anything about the bird, because it's like pretty singular, but um, I, is it a giant raven? Or is it just a normal raven? Because we've got nothing to tell us the scale. So like, I think it looks cool as being like a raven that's like half size, or I don't even know what size it is. Maybe it's like bigger than an actual raven. Um, but it'd be cool to have something to tell us like, this is a bird that's sitting on a broken twig, but it, so that looks, that tree thing, it could easily be a tree and then there's like a mushroom growing out of it. Is the mushroom really big and that's a full size tree or is that just a random branch? There's a leaf there as well. Okay, so so it is just a normal sized bird. Um, and then you've got this big landscape in the background. Okay. Um, so, yeah, maybe you could have given us something in the background to tell us that. Because having that frame of two pieces of wood behind it that look like trees, you're like, those trees must be really far away, be that small compared to this bird. Um, and also, if I was doing, I know you did the bird first, and then you did the background afterwards, but if you were doing it, I would do it all as one and have the, like, the base, don't just have a circular little base there, like, have the hole underneath of it go up to the background. If you look at up Golden Deep in Winners 2024, and you look at, like, the single figure for 40K, which is actually a diorama, because they were all dioramas, but whatever, and... Um, like the guy, it's like a, it's like an elf on a dinosaur, and it's got this exact thing where there's a background, and then the background becomes the ground and runs up. But it's you want it to be continuous because it just sort of like breaks our immersion to be like there's a section of sky and world here, and then it disappears, and then there's a section of ground there beside it. Um. Also on the background, I was a little bit confused in terms of like, is it nighttime? There's stars, but everything's really brightly lit. And you're like, if it's nighttime, you're not going to get these like super saturated green trees. You're not going to get this red rock here. Um, and I think it looks cool, but I think it's quite a different style to the way you painted the bird. Like it looks quite like there's an artist called Ron Spencer. He's like an illustrator, and like he does this kind of thing where you're like, okay, it's it's stylized night, so it's really dark, but I'm still having really bright saturated colors in it, which can't happen in reality, but you can do it with art all you want. But then the bird doesn't necessarily reflect that. The bird looks very much like this is a real bird in a real world. Does that make sense? Um, and then landscapes, obviously, if you're doing landscapes, just look at Bob Roth or any other. Like there's, there's all these things about how to paint landscapes. I think the trees are probably too detailed because like as things get further away from you, they, they disappear in the background and they become desaturated as well. Um, but like Again, I think it's a really nice looking painting, and I think it's a really lovely looking figure. Um, and they kind of work together, but not 100% for me. But that might just be my personal taste as well. And if it's your first go doing a backdrop, I mean, that's, that's pretty pretty awesome, uh, to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, that, that was very rambly, so I'm, I'm apologizing if there's nothing really actionable in there, but hopefully Jim will be able to set you straight with further comments. Um, I I completely agree. I really love the bird and the base, um, like that stump and the fungi and the acorn and the leaves. Like for me, for me, that kind of all jumped out, and the the scale thing wasn't wasn't really a problem. I I kind of got that from the acorn, I think, more than anything. Um, but I agree with what Matt said about kind of the cool versus warm lighting. Like if you took the background away and just had like the the base and the bird on its own absolutely awesome there is just a small disparity with like the cool the cool highlighting on the bird and then obviously the dark sky so i think next time yeah just pay just um really 
really plan that out what the color is going to be like on all of the, all of the trees and, the, and these trees in the foreground as well um just to make it unify but i think like what you've got there to look at is really really good it's just that small disparity um with the like the color of the highlights the temperature rather um and also like bluebird blue background kind of melt together a little bit and i can see you've gone for like this purpley magenta kind of like sunset kind of feel and i think maybe that's why there's like red highlights on the rocks it's kind of you know reflecting that the sun setting over there somewhere um so yeah but I'd, I'd push that purple and that pink a little bit further where it gets to the horizon line just so the bird can kind of pop out a little bit from the blue um just another little idea but like really well executed like beautifully painted really really cool piece so um thank you nathan uh please come again and show us some more of your lovely work okay on to kelvin um who's been going for speed uh, whilst also maintaining quality, um, we sympathise with this part of the pile of grey. Um, it's, it's a hard, long, <laughs> never-ending fight. Yeah. Um, so five hours yeah. here, and I think he's done really, really well. Um, fur texture, looking for feedback on that, tones, contrast. Um, where can we improve? Um, so the first thing I would do to improve this is cut off his face and sculpt it yourself. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, I just think the sculptors... I, I don't know if this is from a game or D&D &D or something, and this is an actual... Does, you're quite good with these. Is this an actual model from a game or something, or is it just a, a sculpt of a lion? Sir. Say it again? White Lion from Kingdom Death. Oh, the White Lion. Yeah, it's from Kingdom Death. All right, just the White Lion. Game. It's got... Human yeah, it's meant to be like kind of messed up looking. Oh, I okay. Because like he does really, really good stuff, so he wasn't like doing that by accident. Oh, okay, I just but thought that. Yeah, that was one of the things. It was like, why is his face so weird and like the teeth are sticking out like a four hundred year old shark? <laughs> I just don't get it. <clears throat> uh anyway, uh, painting fur, uh, success. I think um, this side. Yeah doesn't sell quite as beautifully as this side um, because you've got the extra contrast here. So these shadows at the bottom of the muscle structures and where it goes underneath the belly, like really, really deep. I mean, some of this might be your, your like the lighting and the camera it's doing the work for you. Um, but this is what really sells it, these deep shadows here. So obviously you're not going to get that in these higher uh, planes of the body and that's all fine. But on the other side, if we flip around to this side, you don't have that same level of contrast. So if you push those like muscle structures on the lower half of the uh, the beast's body, then that's really, really going to help. Same thing goes for the mane. Um, and as Matt now informs me, it's it's a reference from something. So I was going to suggest maybe changing the color of the mane just to kind of break it up a bit. But if it's the white line and that's the way it's supposed to be, then that's the way it's supposed to be, man can't argue with that i like the way you brought some flesh tones like down into the hands that's really cool um around the nose like again i don't know but right cats have got like a really dark border between the actual fleshy part of the nose and the, the furry top bit so maybe just line that with uh not black black it'd probably be too strong but like a like black brown or a very 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 dark blue like nearly black just to give that um, a bit more of a border that would be sweet i think the glowing eyes are good um so with the fur texture like from a right from distance it's 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 really good like the way you've done the hashing and the scratching it's great um just watch the directionality in some places so um direction of the muscle these bits are all fine uh there's some that sort of cross over and that's okay not a problem at all it's like where you get to here like down the back side of it here, these should all be kind of coming across, following this curve of the rump, where you've got these ones coming across here, it breaks the illusion straight away. So make sure you follow the curve. I mean, it's cool that you've got some, like I said, the other side where they sort of cross over, but they're still generally following that downward plane that's following that muscle. Yeah, but when we go back to, oh, oh, oh. Uh, this one it's going completely the oppo opposite direction you see what i mean There's, those muscles are formed that way so um yeah just watch out for this some of these are a bit long as well there was a uh, good example of longness uh 
here, I think, on this one. So where it's a really long muscle like this, do do layers of it. It doesn't have to be like 10 layers, you know, even if that was like just three, that would look way better. You know what I mean? Rather than doing this great, because the lions don't have hairs that long, okay? Only in the mane. The, the fur is much, much shorter. So you look much like what you've done here. You've broken it up into kind of sections so um yeah but mostly a, a real a real success on the fur and especially for five hours you know this is really hypercritical of me so um yeah really 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 nice overall um i can't remember if i mentioned the glowing eyes but they sell as well so uh good stuff there nice one thank you kelvin uh over to matt yeah really nice we've actually seen this model a couple of times or maybe just me but it's it's always tricky it's like it's a white lion what's it gonna look like and like um the white lion and um, kind of scuppered in terms of it just being white is annoying and it's all one texture but yeah, i think you did a really really good job the way like you have the dark colors the hands and the underbody and even the mane kind of fading to black um, and it's just really done a, a super good job of breaking up that white and making it look interesting the texture is doing a lot for you as well and the way you pulled out those muscle structure looks fabulous uh, i think probably jim might have said it but just to reinforce like just a couple of places you don't quite have like you gotta you want it to go from light to dark, but it kind of goes light to light. So I'm thinking especially like top of his head, where his mane goes to his hair, like fringe, I want to call it. Like if you had a dark, like have it as it wraps under, it becomes darker again, either because of shadow or just because the hair is dark. It doesn't matter. Just apply to yourself, whatever you want. it just look a bit better if it went dark and then, or it was light here and then it went dark and then his hair that's here is light again. Uh, and as well, I think the glowing eyes, Again, they look good, but they'd look even better if they had a really super thin, dark line around them, uh, just so to do that, so you don't have a light color on an even up on a light color as well. Um, I also really like the way it is based in those kind of blue, shadowy colors. It's like a really, really small thing, but a really cool idea. Where it's like, well, he's all warm and bright, and then as it fades away, it gets darker towards his hands, and you're like, oh, how about the base? contrast you're like it's dark you're like make it cold you like you know good job yeah really nice one of the best one of the best ones of these we've seen and it, and again it's it even has that whole kingdom death all about like light and shadow and we kind of get that idea of like maybe he's being lit from like some sort of torch light because of the warmth and the way the, the light like fades across him without you having to go into super messy osl so great job all around uh fair play keep knocking back those those gray models Show him his boss. All right, up next, Aaron Goodge, first bust. Good job. Busts are really fun, but really, really hard. Um, uh, and you can spend an awful lot of time at a bust um, and not really feel like you did a whole lot um, because, you know, at that scale, the amount of stuff, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword because it's easier to paint because it's bigger, but it means there's more, you have to paint more details that you wouldn't be able to see, like on a real, like a really small figure. Uh, I think it's really cool. I love the uh, love the super like in your face red color. I'm like, yeah, it's like real '90s dinosaur. I love the way it's like wrapped around. People started making them real. Well, within the '90s, they started making them all boring and gray brown and green and stuff. And now everyone's like, nah, they're birds now. They can be whatever color you want. So yeah, I love the red. Uh, and then you obviously have the nice blue to contrast with that. And then this kind of iridescent greeny feathers up there, really nice. Uh, I'd say it looks like super good. Like it. I don't know what size it is. It seems pretty big, but it did look really great, like a far side of the room. Um, so uh, in my notes, I have said, yeah, really lovely use of saturation, like very, very vibrant red. Uh, I like the way you've got some shading in under the throat and you're picking out the scales. He looks like you've got a little bit of shading on the gold as well and on the blue. So yeah, very nice work. Um, one thing that kind of stood out for me was the lip. Like there's a whole debate whether or not dinosaurs had lips and what kind of lips they would have had. But I don't think they had like pink human lips like that because they're like scales, covered in scales. So they'd have like thinner scales or whatever. Like lizards don't have lips that are like, I don't know if you were trying to go for it's a lighter colored scale, but because it's pink, it, it reads as like human lip color. And then it's kind of weird how you extended it back like behind to the very back of his mouth, like where it's open up here. And you've got that kind of like fleshy, whatever, like it's the jaw muscle or something on the inside, but then he has lip up there. It seems like that's like basically a, that's like a cheekbone. Like, so you've got his lip comes like all the way over to here, which is a little bit weird. Like when his mouth's closed, like his lip's gonna be to here. It wouldn't go the whole way back there. So just go over that. You could, I mean, you don't have to, but you could just go over that with your 
darker red skin tone, and that would just immediately deal with that for me. But if you're happy with it, you know, if you're happy with it. Um, also, I think the the eye is a bit too white. Like, eyeballs aren't really white. Um, you know, they're like a creamy color. They're actually very similar to like like your palest skin tone a lot of the time. Although this doesn't apply because he's, you know, a lizard. Um, but just having anything that's like just flat white tends to look fake um, because it looks like it's white paint because we're used to seeing like stuff that's in nature. Very little things are just flat white like that uh, unless they've been painted by people um, or are just chalk. But anyway, um, yeah, and the horns as well. They could have a horn to them, like go from like a, a light, like a, a off white, go for off white and then like shade it down into towards brown. Um, and then you can do the same thing on the teeth, uh, and as well, just do like look up, like because busts obviously have eyes. This one isn't super big, but like it's a really good opportunity to work on like doing your eye, getting like all of the components of the eye, and having like, a dot of light and everything in there, and it'll really stand to you because like it's such a focal point on any figure, but especially on a bust, where like you look straight at their eyes because when you look at a person, you look at their eyes. Um, so if you can get them to look like realistic and kind of natural, that's gonna like kick up like that's gonna make like a huge improvement for like actually not that much work once you get it down. Uh, but yeah, he's a cool, cool jungle warrior guy. Um, really good work, especially for a first boss. So uh, looking forward to see how you get on with the next one, Jim. Um, yeah, I'll just stick with the eyeball thing because I just googled some and I've got some pff, epic pictures of lizard eyeballs like from Google, and you can see straight away, like what Matt's talking about here, like there's nothing that's purely white about any of this. No eyeballs are like it, because if it's pure white like this, then you can't, you can't paint in, I'm pointing at the screen, fool. <laughs> you can't um, get this lifelike, the reflection, the, which shows like the glossiness in the eyeball, every single one will have it. To a, to a certain extent, but if it's flat white, then you can go no brighter and you can't depict these these glint reflections that are in the eyeball. That's called the life light. And without it, an eyeball will just look painted. It won't look real. Um, I think this is probably your best bet to go for. So you went for the slit. Um, so yeah, you want to paint the, the whole socket black, then come in um, with your like ruddy orange and paint the whole thing orange and then build it up to yellow towards the middle then you do the vertical slit and then chink one or two maybe there's your pure white just dots in 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 one corner that's how you make eyes look alive so um that'll really help it pop straight away but i completely agree with matt said about the horns they're a big thing that stood out as being too bright as well um but otherwise the only other thing i thought really was just separating things um separating it out so just uh you know a dark occlusion where sort of materials meet whether it's metal and bone or metal and scales or you know some of the fabrics against the body you know all of that sort of stuff just make sure it's uh it's just edged out really darkly and that will help the whole thing pop a lot more so um yeah but i love the like the the tone of it the feel of it like the bust itself is really really cool um so yeah nice one aaron thank you very much good luck with it Okay, moving up to Alessandro, um, who had this program for next month, apparently, but got it done earlier. So, woohoo, nice one, Alessandro. Um, so, the first thing I had was that her eyes were really, really beautiful. Um, so, yeah, great work with those eyes because she's tiny and like the soft contrast you've got in the face and like the, the way you've highlighted like the, the halo of the head um really really nice so great job with her with her face a lot of attention was coming up there straight away um and her armor as well is really really nice so like you've got a great run of color from shadow to light shadow to light everywhere edges picked out rivets you know well separated all really really good so like the rider is really really nice i enjoyed that a lot but then uh for the beastie that she she's on i didn't think that had the same sort of level of care the green looks um pretty flat to be honest it looks like it's been shaded with something but that's about it so i think if you went to um the next level on this you would volumetrically highlight um the beast um and shade it down where you'd expect there's a little bit going on but i think it just needs more because there's so much contrast in the rider and i get you want the attention to be on the rider 
but also I do think the BC needs a little bit more as well. I like these freehand um, like camouflage natural, they look like a butterfly um, sort of camouflage, don't they? Like the eye things to make it look like it is uh, a predator, not a prey. Uh, so that's a really, really nice touch. I like that. Um, then I thought that the blade could do with some some more love. It looks, I mean, it's out of focus here, so it might be a little bit harsh. But um, yeah, just the weapons. Like I wasn't really sure what's going on with the shield, whether it's like a, a black pattern that's sort of painted on, like, you know, her, she's painted it on or whatever, her armor smith. Um, but wasn't really sure what's going on with it because it's kind of out of focus a little bit. Um, so yeah, maybe a little, because like hands face base and weapons i think are the most you know attractive things on a model most of the time it's where we look naturally for for interest so make sure the weapons are um are up to the same standard as you know her armor and her face as well and i think you'll be in a good place but it's a great model um i like what we did with the base too the bits of extra detritus around you could probably put a little bit more like dusty stuff to settle the cork down a little bit but not a major issue I, I like the way you've painted the tufts and you know the random placement of the rocks um i think the base looks really good um for maximum points you would of course do the rim black but hey never mind that's a that's a taste thing i'm sure and i'm always going to point it out if i notice it um so yeah thank you alessandro over to you matt yeah i totally agree with jim uh, on pretty much every every point here she looks amazing Really cool conversion as well, you know, making her a cat girl. And like the pink armor is so outstandingly well done. Like I absolutely love it. Uh, but like it's pretty immediately obvious that the beast doesn't have as much uh, time put into scales. I'd say that pattern took a really long time. It was very annoying to get it all right because it's very fiddly. I think maybe you might have been, if your time is a concern, you might have been better served doing like just like one big thing per wing rather than trying to do like six like small ones and try to get them all correct because like they are well done and i'd say that was a, a huge amount of work um but um yeah so it might be easier to do one and you have a bit more time to do on the just the general feel of the uh the bc if you have an airbrush as well that'll make things a lot quicker to do any kind of large model like this so just a, a suggestion or recommendation i would uh, say uh and yeah i just thought her shield was very weird as well it looks like it was like some sort of effect on it or somehow painted but like the kind of gray color that's on it just looks like primer so it's like kind of confusing uh, when i see it Maybe, i'm sure there's a story behind it says like use on it or something uh but yeah <laughs> i'm looking forward i hope you're doing a whole army of like cat girl uh storm cats because like if not i'm gonna be really disappointed <laughs> and i want to see all these them all wrapped up in their bright pink armor because i'd say it would be amazing uh, thanks a million, Alessandro. We're going to move on up to Sasha doing uh, this Nurgle robot thing, which uh, we've possibly seen before. Not this one, but another iteration of it. Pretty cool. Uh, great to see you having another another whack at it. It looks really cool. Um, uh, I like the kind of darker colors you use on the base, uh, and it's kind of like got that horrible like world rotting away look to it, which is really cool and appropriate for, for Nurgle. Um, I think that uh, yeah, I, I I think you you've done a good job of kind of like you know calling out all the different areas. It's a very busy model, and uh, oh. you've got a, done a good job of kind of seeing all these little doodads and stuff it's got. I think the face, in as much as it has a face, could maybe do with a little bit more attention. Like it's got this like bony top jaw thing, and I think like hitting that with some white to like brighten it up. Uh, to draw attention there and then darkening down that weird like centurion hat or whatever thing that's covering it like making that a bit more rusty or something would uh you know to show us that there's like an organic element in there and that'd be real unsettling because you're like oh it's got like a person head underneath all this stuff it looks like a bad guy from doom to be honest with you um then overall you look you've got a very kind of clean look to all the like metals so you could do, especially on like the bits where, you know, he's walking through this horrible monkey stuff, like having some like, you know, get some of your guts and gore or, or like weathering or something up onto those and um, uh, like sidearms and things. And it can also be a good way to like, uh, like that if you want an area to be a bit less bright, but it's silver and it's like just a solid panel of silver, you're like, oh, start pushing some weathering powder into these corners or like 
run some gore across it randomly here or there. Uh, and you can kind of use it as a, as a little arty, artistic hack to kind of like put, draw the eye to wherever you want it to be. Um, but yeah, I think he looks looks really good. I really like the way you've got like the hazard stripes on like one half and, the, and then it runs through the, the whole like chaos trim that's going on. Uh, and then there's like some sort of like runes or something etched into the other side. And it looks really, really cool. Uh, and yeah, and great to see that you're kind of like progressing on your next iteration of this guy. I don't know if it's a part of a whole army, but it's cool to see them beside each other or like in a group or whatever in the future. Um Jim. Yeah, I agree with all that. Um looks really cool. Um but the clean the clean metal thing, I think with like nurgly chaosy things, um you could certainly add a little bit more vary because there's a lot of metal and it's kind of um based and then washed so you could definitely play around next time or indeed with this because it wouldn't take very long just different tones of brown really either like agrax is a good one obviously um or just mix up any old brown with some water or medium or whatever just make your own like colored washes just to show like a bit of rust corrosion um it'd be bound to be on there so yeah definitely i think that would be an, an, a nice touch and I think you free-handed all of this stuff on, so just applause, really, because that must have been a right pain in the bum, because there's a lot of it, and it's very small, and you've taken your time with that, and it looks really, really great. So, uh, yeah, yeah, really, really good. Um, muted bass as well, much, much better this time around, much better. Uh, I agree with all that. Um, so then the only other thing I had was maybe if you wanted to, I don't suppose it really matters because it's nurgly and it's rough, but some of the highlights on the black are a bit sort of um a bit scratchy with brush strokes. So you can maybe smooth those out a little bit. Um but just a minor thing really. Um because on the whole I think it looks pretty awesome. And as Matt said, I'd like to see them all in a unit when they're all done. So uh yeah thank you Sasha. Okay moving up uh to Bobby G here from Mark um marching from a crag um, well, he's done a load of ultramarines. Um, so I think we'll just treat this as a unit because um, they are all ultramarines and, you know, units are perfectly acceptable. So we won't dive down deep on every single one. Um, but just get some, so we got a uh, librarian and Phobos here. He's looking pretty angry. Um, some sort of captain or sarge. And then obviously Bobby G. So um, nice work with all the golds. Um they were nice. I thought that obviously it's better on. Oh, you've done different heads as well. I've just noticed. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh yeah, nice one. Uh, very cool. So uh, yeah, the golds. Uh, I like what you've done with it. Um, you could maybe push the highlights on some places uh, a little bit further. Uh, just like you know, mixing some silver with the gold. Um, but I like the general tone of it. I think it's quite good. Uh, so that's nice. Then. Uh, in general, I thought the blue, though, needed a little bit more. So I don't know which order you painted this in. But um, generally with the power armor, you paint the armor first um, because it is quite messy to get like the, the volumetric highlighting right on it. This is kind of um, done blue and then sort of edge highlighted. So if you want to take them up a notch next time, um, try like just very very lightly dry brushing before you've painted anything else just make it uh make the whole thing blue and then just dry brush some upper parts so that they can be um brighter than lower parts and then obviously go in with your edge highlights a little bit later uh excuse me uh so that that was it really just just to make the push the blue a little bit further next time um so that's that uh let's have a look at the rest um Green bases, right, green base rims, and then a white base rim on Bobby was what I sort of picked out. Like, if they are all together on the table together, why have we got different um, red for the librarian? Uh, I get this, it's kind of matching with their trims that's on their armor. I can see that. So, green for this guy, red for the librarian, and he's white for some reason. So it doesn't it doesn't really make them unify on the table together very well. So um I'd advise you just I mean it's a neat idea to I've not seen it to be honest, but I think they just would look so much better if they were just black rimmed, as I said in the last review. Uh so yeah there's that. Um really good shot at doing the um the geometric uh camouflage pattern uh on the robes of this guy that's really cool 
it's just just a matter of practice, um, getting the coverage a little bit um, smoother, so it's a little bit um, splotchy in some places where the paint's a bit thick. Um, so just take your time next time and just build that colour up um, with thinner paint rather than trying to get it all on the first time. Uh, it does take a few passes to do, but it's well worth it. Trust me. Um, and then the um, the face. So um, if you've never heard of him, uh, find a guy called Darren Latham, L-A-T-H-A-M, on YouTube. Um, he's basically uh, one of the studio artists for GW. Or he was. I think he's a designer now, isn't he? A sculptor. Um, but he did the best video on painting a space marine face you will ever come across anywhere. So go and look at that. It's literally just how to paint a space marine face. And it should jump right out at you. It is one of the most viewed videos as well uh, for a face. So check that out um, just to bring some more life into the faces. Um, but yeah, otherwise, um, like loads of effort with the gold. Looks really, really good. The fire looks sweet as well. So uh, yeah, a lot of this I really, really like. So thank you, Mark. And over to you, Matt. Yeah, I think Jim has probably learned a lot more about these space men than me, so glad uh, that it worked out this way. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to say the flames look really nice um, on the figure. Like they're not like super distracting, which would be problematic with this kind of thing. Um, and yeah, just you know, we, we're all all about art. Do whatever you want, but all your models would look better with black rims or just very dark, the same color rim. It just makes it, it's distracting and weird. It's like if I just drew like a red streak across my face and then wanted rain, people would look at me and be like, I just got a red streak across the face, yeah? So librarian have a red base, just make them all one color um, and do something else if you want to distinguish between different like types of units or whatever. And I'd also, you know, you did said the base is very basic to fit in with your army, but I'd say you could do more with the army. I mean, like, there's not a huge difference between him and the Primarch. It's just a bunch of, like, shading, like, dragging off nightshades, a couple of other little bits and bobs, and it'll immediately, like, pump things up a big amount. Because, like, at the moment, it is very, like, it's cement kind of looking, you know? Um, and it would be one of the easy, shortest steps to do to just add some washes randomly about that, give it a bit more depth, um, and it'll pump the army straight away, and then make the bases all look bigger. But yeah, like really nice work on the gold uh, rim that is like everywhere as well. And cool that you have the heads interchangeable on your fire mark as well. Okay, we've got another work in progress here. Again, same thing I'm going to say to the person. Can't say your name. I'm sorry. That reads the relic or whatever it is. I learned MMM. Looks good. Uh, go in the right direction. We can't really say anything much because we don't know if this is like 90% done or 2% done. Uh, and one man's work in progress is another man's like display model. Does that make sense? So um love to see it when it's, you know, done, quote unquote. Um and you know, just be keep pushing the contrast is very important. And since this figure has a lot of, you know, it's pretty famous, it's that Thunderhammer dude. Uh, I'd look up reference of someone else who's done it in NMF and just put the highlights and the shadows in the same places that they did uh, would be the best advice I could give you. Okay, I'm going to move on up. We're not counting that as mine. Lake Jamieson, first commission ever to finish this month. Very good. Last picture, us, uh, the reference picture you were given. Well, uh, I think you could have done the brief as well as you possibly could because I got to those like reference pictures and I just thought it was more pictures of the, of the model for a minute. Uh, it looks exactly like the reference picture, so great job on that. Um, yeah, um, little pointers for yourself, like uh, I have here for you know your own evolution as a painter. Some of the orange, you got a little bit of overspill. It looks like on his like face, where it's like gone as a rim above the visor. Um, and generally, I'd say having a, some sort of shading to the orange. I know it's like not necessarily apparent in the um, like reference or whatever, but like say in the back of his neck, like just having a completely flat orange is weird when there's like a shape that has contours to it, and um, because we'd expect there to be some sort of light or shadow affecting that. And similarly, like on, on the faceplate, like in under the rim of the faceplate, there should be like a dark line because there's a little shadow cast from the like top of the visor down onto the glass below it. Um, and that would uh, just give you a little bit better definition. And 
can also help you if there is any overspill. You're just like tidying it up like kind of automatically. Um, then I like what you did with the blood splatter on the shield. It's way cooler looking than you know, like the just like kind of orange gradient that we can see in the uh, in the the reference photo. Um, and like yeah, it's generally nice and tidy. Uh, and like I like your the palette. Obviously, it's kind of addicted to like something else. Uh, but I like what you did with the base as well. So like, yeah, I mean, jobs are good. And to be honest with you, it's, it's mostly what I have to say on it. Um, Jim? Um, yeah, pretty much um, the same. Like, got things where you want it. Um, and that's all sound. Um, I think you've rendered it quite well. It's just a case of, um, like, practicing brush control, getting thinner lines. Uh, cleaner lines so um, I don't know what brush you're using obviously but um, if you if you have got the means to invest in a proper sable brush I would definitely recommend doing that and then um, I don't think it's necessarily like the thickness or like the consistency of the paint I think it's just like the tip and the practice so if you are able to get one if not just get the sharpest brush that you've got and it sounds like a silly thing to say but just like once a uh, once a day ideally if not you know a couple of times a week just practice doing five lines just about a centimeter long down and then underneath it five lines but you're trying to get them thinner this time and then underneath that thinner again and you do that for you do that you draw five rows of doing five vertical lines it's a great great um drill to practice and then the next time so you've done 25 like uh, blocks there of five so then the next time you start it you will start on the second row and then you will go for five again and gradually you'll get these lines thinner and thinner and thinner and it's just a great way to practice that brush control that smoothness working the consistency of the paint as well um, it works with dots as well if you're ever trying to do small dots you just practice five in a row then smaller then smaller then smaller really really great drill to practice um, so have a go at that because you know um you know the tones the shapes and everything i think you've done really really well with so just just brush control i mean it's really really small as well so it's probably hypercritical um but yeah the only other thing that i sort of picked out was why is there a red glow on this shield where is that coming from because there's nothing from the ground is that blood is that light i don't really know um so but i noticed it was in the reference as well like not a very clear shot on it but so you're just doing as you're told and it's absolutely fine but the rest of the shield i thought was if this is light um which i think it probably is um you need to have like a dark band of shadow between the cast light and the like the the normal color of the shield if that makes sense because the, for this glow to overpower this zenithal light up here, it would have to have fallen into shadow. So just dry brush like a, a darker colour across the middle of it, and that'll make it look much better straight away. All right, Lake, uh, thank you for submitting. Uh, good luck with all of that. Um, and yes, well done for, for submitting a finished piece, unlike your, your first whip. Um, so then on to John. Uh, happy spring to you too. So we've got an engineer now for the Infinity Yu Ying. Uh, not sure if the green works. It's kind of a blueprint for the standard infantry. Uh, I'd like feedback on the guns as well. And anything else that stands out in need of work. Uh, oh, the, the bright neon strips on the base room are line of fire markings. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so feedback on the guns and anything else that stands out. So um, firstly, I think the green's fine. I don't see an issue with that really. I mean, you could push it up. It's quite cold green. You could contrast it with the blue armor by pushing it up into a like a warmer spectrum, like up to um, like a yellowy or like a like limey sort of color. Lime's quite a good um, highlight color for green. Um, I think you've done a great, a much better job with the leather this time. Like the last last one you did, the the leathers were a little bit flat, so this is way way better. So great work on the leather, like the highlighting, the scratching, the damage, the weathering, all looking great on there. Really really like that. Um, the gun, I think there was like a little bit of OSL on the front, which was strong. I thought it's very subtle, but it's there, and I think you've you've sold that really really nicely. Um, and then over to uh, that side of the gun, oopsie. Uh, yeah, so these tiny, tiny, tiny details that you've managed to get smooth blends on. Really, really great work on the gun. Um, more RSL from this uh, 
display or whatever it is on the gauntlet. Really, really, really strong. So, um, you know, for the size of these things, um, I think you're doing really, really great. The black is, you know, m more than 50% black. You could you could probably get a little bit more highlight on the black, but I don't really think you need to, to be honest. Um, everything's like really well separated as well. So, uh, yeah, really strong overall, John. Uh, I haven't got much more critical advice, really. You could maybe do some more edge highlights like push the edge highlights up a bit because it's kind of black and then it goes to like your highlight color and it, mm, you could maybe do like a third color and just brighten up just it doesn't have to be every you know facet of every edge but just in some places you know like you could do a really bright highlight there nick one there top of the boot you know same here just just pick out a few really bright places same with like upward facing on the front it's a bit brighter on the front to be fair but yeah you could maybe punch it up a little bit it's best on this boot i think here how how bright it's gone uh on this boot i think if you did that for the rest of the, like the black armor you would it would be really really popping so uh yeah oh and great tones in the face as well like you've got like the five o'clock shadow great tones in the cheeks as well eyes eyebrows even looks awesome so uh yeah well done really really good stuff um loving it thank you john uh matt yeah, for like your line infantry guys, like really, really good work. I think this is the first time we've seen you do a face, or at least recently anyway, that I can remember. And like, it's really good. That's a really, really nice, like the way Jim said, the way just like tones wrapping around and in light in his cheeks. Uh, he is kind of wonky. His right eye didn't come out quite right. Oh, Left no. eye is perfect, so you do it, but you're just gonna have to go back because it's just like, you know, such a small detail. And when I played Infinity, that's I, harsh. Go. I, I, <laughs> I didn't put my eyes on anybody. <laughs> Other guys had helmets where I was just like, no, nah, I'm not even bothering because it's so small. But just like, just tidy up the slightest bit, and suddenly the guy's going to be like, you know, like really good, like like fucking like competition standard, nearly that many. Um, yeah, leather looks great, like absolutely nice, convincing, interesting looking leather. Um, and then, yeah, that, that OSL touch on the, on the front of the gun, it's so good. It's like the way it's like, you know, it's, it's interacting more with the white than with the red bands because that's what, what happens. Like, yeah, that's super good. That's exactly what you want. It's understated, but it's like realistic and effective. Um, yeah, and I think it's, like, again, for like your line infantry guys, it's like super, super high-end stuff. And I love the way you do your bases as well. They've got that whole kind of like stylized, they're really dark. Is it nice? But you can see everything or not. You're like, it doesn't even matter. It looks like really cool looking and totally sets the tone of the scene uh, for your like, you know, cyberpunk esque Infinity Future Wars. So cool. Thanks, man, for submitting as always. Uh, and then we have another regular Bielkin uh, with a Slanashi Horde for Warhammer Underworld. It's very good. Um, so it's looking for a high tabletop standard, especially looking at the NMM and the dark skin tone. Um, I think you mean TMM. Like this is like obviously some sort of gold metallic paint, but like you've done a very nice non-metallic style shading on it. So that, yeah, which they end up being kind of the same thing. Um, so yeah, so looking at the metals and the skin tone. Uh, so just overall notes. Uh, on my page. Like the colors are really really nice. I really love the way you've got this live form and cold so you've got, got magenta and then the steels are all kind of cold colored and then the um the, the skin is warm and then the the other elements are just blue and you've gone pretty limited uh, which is the way to go uh, as i'm sure you know yourself um the the non-metallic shading on everything looks really really good uh really nice and cool. there's a lot of metal going on here i think the standout part for me is probably the shield on the main guy where that's like got this great focus on it uh, and like his helm as well um, some other bits that aren't like 100% working are like the blade of the spear for me and like some of the spiky bits but like a lot of that's to do with the figures themselves being like horribly overwrought and having like metal bits with metal bits sticking out of them with metal bits sticking out of them uh, so I don't think there's a huge amount you know that you can re really do apart from like treating it like maybe like the like if the, the spear had, you said that like the half of it is like the wood up to a certain point, then it's going to be metal and, and some other bits. Uh, but yeah, like everything is super well defined and easily readable, which is very impressive considering how ostentatious these models are. 
Um, on the skin, uh, there isn't like a huge amount of skin showing on these guys. So, and it's all very weird because they've got just holes in random places in their clothes. So, like, if you're for your own practice, you might be better off going with something that's more like just a shirtless dude. <laughs> but, uh, but I think it looks quite good um, in terms of the colors you've used. Uh, and you've got a very high contrast, which is very important because, like, you know, dark skin still comes to basically the same highlight because uh, it's like refracting light out through the skin. Uh, a couple of things, though, so, like their hands are very dark, whereas like everyone has pale hands, like palms of their hands and toes and fingernails. They're always that color. So it's not like there's no like whatever, like Malpighian layer for that part of your skin. But so there's no one you can't tan there if you tan. And if you have a dark skin tone naturally, you won't on those parts of your body. So like if you look at like some of them where they're holding the weapons, we don't see any kind of like lightning around here. Uh, and some of them you can even unlike again, the toes are still very, very dark, whereas like they have I mean they could they should have painted their toenails because they're into slap mesh. But if they didn't paint their toenails, they'll be like the same color as mine, basically. Uh, so I like pink. Um and then as well, I thought the scarring on like your leader dude, like it looks good. It's well picked out. It doesn't look super realistic, but I think the sculpt makes it almost impossible because, like, if you think about it, at scale, like those scars stick out like quarter of an inch from the skin or whatever, which wouldn't really happen. I think it looks better on the um, Minotaur dude, the way it's like recessed and it's almost like glowing with like slanish energy. I don't know if you can pull that off the same on the ones that are sticking out. And uh, I think you've done about as good as you can on them. Um, and then last couple of little nitpicky things. I think some of the fur, like the the fur on the leaders like cloak rough. Some of like the highlights are kind of like too close to each other and like blurring together. And the same with like the mohawks don't have like any kind of texture on the top of them, which isn't sculpted on, which is its fault. But you know, you could just add like a little stiffly to show that there's like you know, like individual strands of hair coming up there. And um, because yeah, I think like the blues, in, like every element of this looks pretty good. Like the skin's good, the metals are good, the magenta's good, the blue's good. That's the whole model. Uh, so like you know all the other stuff it's it's, it's very uh, nitpicky and as well I just wanted to say they have a really cool like attitude and like gel really well as a war band all together like when you look at them like just in the one pick you're like this is totally a cool um, unit oh and the gems you can say the gems they're awesome that is like really 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 nice work on them uh, Jim yeah stunning especially for tabletop standard just blah well blown way above what it needs to be for table like the contrast the travel the smoothness separation oh, it's all amazing it's a bit like this was one of the my favorite pieces was this uh head uh covering like cowl on the minotaur and then for some reason these robes i think just like the depth and the richness in this color is just absolutely superb i think you nailed the dark skin tone um I agree with what Matt said there about palms of hands and, and soles of feet. Absolutely a brilliant point. Um, but I think in, in general, I think you did really, really well on the dark skin tones. Really fantastic. Um, the bases look sweet as as well. Really, 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 really good bases. I love that. And like the, the dust coming up onto the cape, like that's stunning. Like, wow. I, oof, I, yeah. I think a missed opportunity, yeah, to make these runes glow on the, uh, on, on the leader's scarification yeah great point by matt i had that as well myself um that's the, the only opportunity i think um unless you wanted to freehand something on the cape but i don't think you really need to you've got the uh you've got the interest with the weathering i think so yeah for 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 the tabletop uh in general i think these are worth more than tabletop i think you could yeah you smash a lot of people out of the park with display quality to be fair really good bilkins thank you so so much they are lovely really good and that scale as well with that penny oh amazing uh right and then uh daniel uh is back again with another competition good luck um so we ignore all this and go to this one because you got it finished um painted all the swords made some changes and rework but let's see if there's anything particular you wanted um just general feedback and critiques i think it was uh so yeah okay um really 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 good Mate, once again, yeah. wonderful stuff, isn't it? Really, really good. Hard to find fault with it. Um, there's a couple of things um, that you might want to tidy up if it's possible, but I just want to say first how really excellent this is. Again, 
like uh, the contrast, like the tattoos, uh, the, the like the snake skin or whatever pattern on her on her dress, like the fabrics around the back, like wow man that's awesome it's so so good and the interesting colors as well that have gone into not only her dress and you've you know there's quite a lot of colors there you've got red you've got blue you've got yellow green orange but you're like you've desaturated everything so nice and balanced it out it's really 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 hard thing to do um and you know the level of contrast as well in the volumetrics that you've got on the, on everything is you know just superb really amazing run of colors in in the in the decapitated dead head of this ogre type thing um so yeah massive congratulations on all of that that's so good um kind of um n n well not nitpicky but the horns kind of look like they're not attached to his head that looks like a you know they've been glued on there but the gap's not been filled i'm sure you're you're more than aware of, of that and how important that is um, but it just looks that way. And also they they don't read as like a bone colour like the teeth do. And even then the teeth are very, very dark as well. So I would maybe kind of push these a little bit more towards a bone colour that we would naturally recognise. Because you've kind of got blue and then you've got like deep red and you've got orange in the horns. And okay, light from the lantern, granted, but that wouldn't be striking this side of the horn. Do you see what I mean? So I just think it would read a lot better, the horns, if they were just like more recognisable colours. Um, also kind of the beard, I think you could um, you could push the structure, like use the shadows to push the structure of the hair a little bit. Um, because again, we're, you've got like a cast light on the head, so it's supposedly in relatively low light, though it is still very brightly lit from the front. Um, yeah, I think you could push a few more shadows around in the beard to kind of ex exaggerate the shape of it. Um, but amazing work with the blood. Um, there's a lot of it and it's easy to overdo, but, you know, it's a big head and it's been cut off. So there would be a lot of blood. But I like the way that you've put in these like little micro scratches and stabs as well all over him. Really, really nice. And like the old wounds as well. Um, the light from the lantern you really improved on, like the first one, the lighting was all really off, like which bits would be hot and which would be, be cooler and darker. So I think um, the changes you made to the lantern were a great success. Um, so yeah, and then again, just this, your your classic soft uh, contrast in the skin, you've done really, really well rendering. So um, yeah, just a tremendous success really, just... I just think the colours of the horns, the settling in and a bit more shading in the in the beard uh, is where I'd take it. But yeah, um, good luck with the competition. Let us know how you get on. Um, congratulations. Good luck. Uh, over to you. Congratulations in advance on just having such a nice looking figure. Uh, oh, yeah. congratulations like, on, on completing such a lovely thing. Yeah, absolutely. Super, super amazing work. Like, there's just so much. Like, the more you look at it, you're just like, so much freehand, so much color, so much loose of light. And then you've even got, like, contrast of finish, which, like, people, like, don't even normally consider, where, like, he's got, like, matte skin and then the gloss uh, blood on it, like, contrasts with that. And you're like, wow, amazing. But, yeah, uh, so anything we say, take with a huge pinch of salt, this is, like, like, I can't even imagine how you, you got this to this stage. Uh, but I also noted that the horn, especially the top one, looks a little bit like it's, like, wobbly or something. Um, I don't know what the deal is with that. But since Jim said it, we're pointing out. And again, the beard, like, you know, everything else is painted so well. And then the beard is, like, still, it's just painted very well, not, like, unbelievably well. Uh, so, yeah, definitely have more shading. Like, you know, if it says like this, you should have darker around here. Whereas it looks like you've kind of done the same all around on the beard. Uh, so that would just be one like little best thing that a judge might pick up on. Um, for me as well, I wasn't 100% sure with this like yellow light you have coming from like her left. Um, I think it looks good in the front view where it's like, you know, illuminating her hair and stuff. But when you look at her from her left, like the area that it covers is very large. So it makes her hair look kind of like particularly in this in the lower highlight 
Uh, so maybe just you could shrink that down a little bit, so it's like, you know, I don't know if it's like maybe like the sun, but so that the the actual extreme reflective light is yellow, and the rest is just kind of like normal light. Um, and also, I wasn't 100 percent sure why there's why it's like on the inside of her hair, like it would travel through, but like she's got very thick hair and it's black, so I don't think it would travel through. Like you could do like the rim where it's like oh the edge of her hair, the light is like going through it. But like for the solid part of her hair, it looks a little bit weird. It would just with, even if you broke it up a lot, so it's like oh, there's a gap in there. And then I wasn't a hundred percent sure what the deal is with like beside her right foot. There's like what looks like a reflection on the ground of her leg, but it's not in line with her leg. It's in line with like her toes, or that's like a line of that yellow light, which again I'm not a hundred percent sure what's creating that or like motivating it. Like I thought for a minute, like. Oh, is it like her gold robe? And like that would be a huge flex to be like, oh, the light's hitting her robe, and when it reflects, it's gold, and that lights up something in the environment. But I don't think it's really the right angle for that. Um. So I don't know. That's like again, it's a kind of an artistic choice. So I don't know if it's you know got a feature at all. Like no one's gonna fault you on the the actual quality of the painting. And then maybe just maybe. I mean, this again, it depends on what angle I'm looking at and things, but like, I think maybe she's got like a red, like, eyeshadow or something. If that could be like just very slightly more saturated, just draw a little bit more attention to her face, because obviously she's got like that kind of geisha makeup and it's very white, but she's also got like the white mask here. And just to have something else to just like make us look there. Because uh, at the moment, like, I mean, you end up looking at all the other stuff, which is absolutely amazing. But again, it'd be even more complex if you were like, oh, you're looking at her face. And you're, Oh, and then she's got this scale pattern here, and she's covered in tattoos, and she's got a gold cloth embroidered cloak, and she's standing on this head, and you know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, that's incredibly nitpicky. Like that would be, all of these things are up to you. Like you're definitely ten times the painter. If I was one tenth the painter you were, I'd be happy with myself. But hopefully that's useful to you, just to get an extra pair of eyes on it. And um, and yeah, and. Um, I think the lighting's very complicated and interesting, and I'm not sure some of the beams of kind of that yellow light are necessarily uh, where you want them or do want a huge man. Um, but I'd say you're going to do well in the competition anyway, <laughs> unless the standard is like outrageously high. Uh, so let us know here, got on, Daniel. Uh, thanks a million for submitting. Always great to, to see your work here. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how, you, how you fare in the contest. Uh, thanks you, the viewer, for uh, watching through to the end, which I'm sure everybody did. Uh, and thanks doubt. to everyone who submitted their model. Uh, not very easy, you know, especially when you're looking at, you should never compare your work to someone else's, uh, but everyone does. Uh, and But it doesn't matter, like, if you're brave enough to put your work out there, uh, then great job for you uh, doing it. And, you know, we're not here to you know, criticize people or put them off. We're just trying to give everybody something that they could have to think about and they could work on in the future. So thanks to you all. And thank you, Jim. And thank you, Matt. See you next month.